Hey guys, it's Dean. Welcome to Manfo Yoga. In this workout, we're going to be working on strength for arm balances. So stuff like crow pose, handstands, forearm stands, that kind of stuff. Uh, before we get started, we are going to, actually, equipment you're going to need. Let's talk about that. You're going to need a yoga mat, um, have a strap, a block, just in case. And then we're also going to use the lacrosse ball to start off. So before I want to get started with the yoga, I want to do some work with the little cross ball, some mobility work to make sure that the shoulders are ready for the workout, to make sure that I'm not injuring my shoulders as I do this and that I'm keeping my chest and my shoulders uh, nice and open and all the muscles are ready to go. So get your lacrosse ball, find a wall, and first thing we're going to do is put a lacrosse ball between your shoulder blades and just kind of work around on the inside of the shoulder blade, just right in this area. So find the wall, you're just going to kind of lean back against it. Oh yeah. Uh, and just kind of slowly roll around the shoulder blade. I did some upper body stuff yesterday. I did some pulling exercises, and those muscles are angry. <laughs> Woo! But this is going to help open them up and make sure that they are ready to use for the workout. You can also play around with moving your arms here. So if you bring your arm across your body like this, you're also going you're going to be able to work a little bit deeper into that area. It's going to move the shoulder blade out of the way. It's going to make uh, the rhomboids and the traps, which are the muscles that you're getting now. It's going to make it a little easier to access those. Just kind of, again, working into that area. You can go maybe up to the traps if you want to. You don't need to. I'd keep the focus on, again, around the inside of the shoulder blade for now. Maybe you can go below it if you want to. And again, it kind of helps to have your arm across your body. That's just going to open up the area so it's easier to get in there. Try to keep your face relaxed, kind of the opposite of what I was just doing, but keep your face relaxed and just work into that. So kind of sink into um, that pressure of the lacrosse ball. You don't want to shy away from it. All right, and then we're going to get into the rotator cuff a little bit. So I want you to go toward the, just behind on the inside of the shoulder. So kind of right around here, we're just going to target all of those Muscles in the rotator cuff, not all of them, but you'll get some of them. Uh, mainly, Terry's minor is the big one to get in here. So we're just kind of moving across the back of the shoulder, maybe in toward the upper arm a little bit, the very top part of your arm. And just making these little circles here, leaning into it, turning from side to side a little bit. Even working maybe down a little bit lower, kind of on the um, on your lat, your latissimus dorsi, and then just kind of working into that area. All right, so we don't want to spend too much time there. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Do the same thing other side. So now we're going to get the right side again. Just kind of find that area inside the shoulder blade. Go up and slowly down, side to side. Trying to identify where it's tight. <sighs> trying to keep your body relaxed. Trying to keep your face relaxed, which can be difficult, especially when you're going through the first few seconds of this and you're realizing just how much angry muscle tissue there is back there. This is a really good idea to do this on a regular basis. It's going to make it a lot easier when you do this. It's also going to help keep your shoulders more mobile. So now bring the arm across the body. You're going to continue kind of rolling up and down, just nice and slow leaning as much weight as you can into the lacrosse ball. And again, right now we're focusing just around the shoulder blade, kind of on the inside and maybe below the shoulder blade. Lacrosse ball is nice because it's pretty mobile. Um, it'll move a lot more than, than a knot out. Uh, sometimes you'll want to use a knot out, especially if you're going between the shoulder blades um, and you're lying on your back because the lacrosse ball can roll over and kind of hit your spine and that's never fun. But uh, once you develop the body awareness and kind of the skills to do this with the lacrosse ball, it, it, gets, it gets easier because you'll know what you need to do to make the ball stay in place. So if it's rolling around a lot at first, that's okay. You'll get used to it. And if you find a part that seems to refer, if you find a, a particular area or muscle knot that seems to refer pain up to another part of the, the muscle, so it kind of maybe shoots up um, the entire shoulder toward the neck, that is 
that is a trigger point, that is a good place to work into because that's going to help you release the muscle. All right, so again, not spending too much time here. You can keep going, maybe spending two minutes total on this. And then let's get toward the rotator cuff as well. So I'm going to move toward the outside. I'm just going to kind of put that under my armpit back here and then roll in that area. You can also maybe hold on to your arm so you can totally relax the arm. So if you're holding your arm really intensely like this, you're not going to be able to get into the rotator cuff very well because those muscles are engaged. But if you can relax the arm, right, maybe even holding it like you just saw me do here, that'll make it a lot easier. So just kind of working into that, sp that space right behind the shoulder. <sighs> Breathing deeply. especially moving slowly over the areas that tend to be more tender, that are, that are more tender. So if you find that spot that's a little angry or maybe really angry, just stay at it. Be relentless. Be gentle. Don't push as hard as you possibly can into it, but ease into it. Relax into it. And again, maybe spending a minute there as well. All right, feel free to press pause and do this for another minute. We're going to move on. We're going to do just one more. I want to do chest here. So we're going to work right on the upper pec. So right here, working into the pec minor area. So this right below the clavicle, right below your collarbone, toward the shoulder joint itself, and then kind of the upper corner of the pec. So we're going to find a wall again. You're just going to lean into it and just kind of move around like this. Just kind of working into that area and kind of roll to the outside of the pec. So if you roll all the way across and kind of get to the outside of the pec, almost to the side of your body, that's a good spot to get. You can also do this if you don't have a wall. You can also do this on the ground. Uh, I would recommend using a block though. So you would put the lacrosse ball on top of the block and then kind of roll around on it. And then th the benefit of using uh, the ground to do this is you can also start to move your arm a little bit more. So you can use the arm. You can find a spot on the chest and then use the arm to kind of work deeper into the area. So kind of moving the arm like you see me doing here. And again, we're not going to spend too much time here and you probably won't get all of the knots in your chest out in just one minute. So your goal is just to get just to get a little bit different, just to get a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a release. You're not going to drastically alter the uh, soft tissue character of your chest in just one minute, but you can get a little bit of a release. And then let's go to the ground, and I'm going to show you how to do this on the block as well. So we're going to put the lacrosse ball on top of the block. You're going to put your chest, that same area, right on top of the lacrosse ball on the block. It might move around a little bit, and we're just going to move the arm like this. So you're going to make little circles with the arm, reaching up, reaching back, reaching straight out, making some circles like this, and kind of just releasing the chest onto the little cross ball. You can also try bringing your hand behind you like this, kind of bringing the hand, the top of the hand across the back, and then releasing into the, releasing into the block or into the little cross ball. And there's a lot of real, there's a ton of different things you can do to make this work. So feel free to get creative. Your goal here is just to break up that muscle tissue in your chest. So if the wall works better for you, use the wall. If you're doing this and you find that on the ground works better for you, then do it on the ground. Again, maybe spending a minute here. I'm even going to try turning this up a little bit higher and seeing if that helps. So it's, again, experiment. Try lots of different things. You'll find one that works really well for you. We all have different bodies, different levels of mobility, different areas of the body that are tight, different even sections of or different areas of within the muscle, the same muscle that are tighter. So it's up to you to figure out which is most effective for you. All right, that should be good. All right, shoulders are warm. Let's start the workout. So put that aside. 
put the block aside, put the little crossbar aside. You won't need the little crossbar again. We'll probably use that block later. First thing, let's get the wrist ready. So I want you to turn your wrist around so your fingers are facing you. Spread your hands as wide as you can, as fingers as wide as you can, and then lean back. Just kind of moving from side to side here. So a little bit of a dynamic stretch here, not too dynamic. So we're not staying in place, but we're not, you know, jumping up and down here. Just moving a little bit, maybe twisting, <sighs> twisting to one side, twisting to the other side. And just working into that area. Try to keep your spine neutral as you're doing this, so make sure that you're not rounding your back like this, but keeping your spine neutral. So tailbone is reaching slightly up, chest is facing forward. So we can spend about a minute here just working into your wrist, making sure that your wrists are ready for the, uh, the upper body work that we're going to do today. All right, and then let's flip your hands. So now palms facing up and then fingers facing one another. I'm going to have you press down in the tops of your hands. Don't do it to the point where you have pain, but lightly press into your hands and you should feel your forearms engage. So the inner forearms are going to engage as you're doing this, right? As the hand comes in, you'll feel these muscles in your forearms engage. And that's what we want to make sure is, is those muscles are working here. It shouldn't just be, you know, pain in your wrist. Might be a little uncomfortable at first if you haven't done this stretch before, but we do want to feel some muscle engagement in the forearms as we're doing this. So just like the other uh, wrist exercise we can do, we kind of we can kind of move side to side. We can move up and down. If you want, you can even move your head back and forth, kind of loosening up your neck. Just getting ready for the upper body stuff that we're going to be doing. Just make sure your fingers are spread wide, so reaching your thumbs away from your index fingers, reaching your pinkies away from your ring fingers. All right, and then we're going to make the fist plant. So squeeze your fingernails into your fist, drive your fist into the ground, turn your biceps to face forward, and then just squeeze as tightly as you can fingernails into your palms. Tighten your biceps, lock out your triceps, pull your chest forward, Lift your belly button toward your lower back and just spend a couple breaths here, just getting the forearms nice and active. Knees can squeeze toward one another, looking slightly forward. All right. Hands are nice and warm. Let's get into the shoulders a little bit. So I'm going to have you step up into a low lunge. Push your right hip toward the ground. And I want you to lift your left knee off the ground just, just for a second. So we can make the weight go into the, into the right hip. So instead of putting it in the left knee, we're going to keep that weight in the right hip. And then set your left knee down. Keep that weight in the right leg. Bring your arms up. Grab your left hand with your right fingers, or left wrist with the right fingers. And then reach up and over to the right in a low lunge with a side stretch. So we're opening up the entire shoulder here and also the side of the body. So from the hip all the way up through the shoulder, getting a stretch through the psoas getting a stretch through your obliques, your side body, and through that shoulder. Keep your chest lifted, keep your head up. Leaning up and over. Two more breaths, get a little bit taller, see if you can lean over a little more, using your core strength to prevent you from falling over. And then come back, and we're gonna switch sides. So now left leg is forward, right leg is back. And again, lift the right knee off the ground, push your left hip toward the ground, getting the weight into your left hip, taking it out of the, the right leg when we go down, and then slowly releasing that right knee down, again, keeping that focus on the left hip engagement, not letting the hips become not level, or in unlevel, whatever that word is. Bring your right arm up, grab your right wrist with your left hand, press up, lean over. So left hip presses toward the ground, ribs lift up away from the hips, stretching from the right hip flexor all the way up through the shoulder, all the way up through the side body to the shoulder. <sighs> Inhaling to get taller, exhaling to go a little deeper. Three more breaths here, so really getting the shoulders ready for today's workout. 
You want to feel opening up through the ribs. At the same time, you're keeping your obliques tight, so not letting your body poke out to the side too much, but using your core strength to draw it in, and that's going to help you get a better stretch and better core engagement as well. One more deep breath. See if you can go a little bit deeper. And then come back to the middle. Release. Go ahead and stand up. Thanks for joining me for this workout today. Make sure you subscribe. We put out lots of videos like this on a very regular basis. And to get full access to all of my workouts, my programs, tutorials, and more, head to manfulyoga.com. Sign up for a seven-day trial. It's just $1. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next video.